Like Martin Luther King, Grace Lee Boggs does not view being an American as something predetermined which one either accepts or rejects. The meaning of American citizenship must be continually redefined by the rights we demand and the responsibilities we uphold for ourselves and for our sisters and brothers. As you will soon see, there remains so much left to understand about what King means to history and even more to make sense of what his life means to us today. Now on a personal note, at every Grace Lee Boggs speaking engagement I have ever attended, someone's life is forever changed by their first encounter with this remarkable human being. Be prepared today for that person may be you. Please join me in giving a warm Michigan welcome to your 2003 Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Symposium keynote speaker from the heart of Motown, Grace Lee Boggs. I'd also like to thank the planning committee for choosing Gandhi's maxim, be the change that you want to see in the world. I can't think of any more, any statement which since 9-11 sums up so succinctly the challenge that faces us. To face the changes that we have to need, make both in our personal and our public lives, now that we are vulnerable, and in order to reach the dream of safety and happiness, which has been the promise of this country. We can begin, of course, by accepting the responsibilities of global citizenship and saying no to the war in Iraq. as King did to the war in Vietnam. The Urban Rebellions, the Detroit Rebellion of 1967 and the Urban Rebellions were a great awakening for me. In the late 60s, I had been an activist in the black community for nearly three decades, but had not found it necessary to distinguish between a rebellion and a revolution. Now with young blacks joining the Black Panther Party by the tens of thousands, with black politicians and other careers taking advantage of the rebellions to advance themselves, and with corporations and institutions falling over one another in their rush to co-op blacks, Jimmy and I had to ask ourselves new questions. Out of that questioning, we concluded that although rebellions are important, because they represent the standing up of the oppressed. They fall short of revolution because people at the grassroots level have not been involved in creating the new values, the new truths, the new relationships, and the new infrastructures that are the foundation for a new society. That is why beginning with 1988, Jimmy and I felt that we had to go beyond protest politics and concentrate instead on projecting and initiating new ideas and new forms of struggle that involve young people especially in exploring in theory and practice the new forms of work, education, community, and citizenship that have become possible and necessary in the wake of the rebellions. King rejected the dictatorship of high tech which he said diminishes people because it eliminates the sense of participation. And large material powers, he warned repeatedly, spell enlarged peril if there is no proportionate growth of the soul. We have guided missiles and misguided men. King also worried that the integration won through the civil rights struggle was giving birth to a black middle class who would be preoccupied with individual upward mobility. He deplored the way that educators were trying to instill middle class values in black youth, noting that it was precisely when young Negroes, as he said, threw off their middle class values and put careers and wealth in a secondary role that they made a historic social contribution. 
He called for new programs that would involve young people in direct self-transforming and structural transforming actions in our dying cities, as he called them, and for new forms of work for those for whom traditional jobs are not available. King was a movement activist for only 13 years, from his participation in the Montgomery bus boycott to his assassination in 1968. But the dialectical development of his thinking during those turbulent years is unmistakable. During the civil rights struggle, he struggled to break down racist barriers to black access to institutions. But after having been confronted in 1966 with the anger and despair of black youth, he began calling for a radical revolution and a new social system that goes beyond both capitalism, in which, he, which he said is too eye-centered and too individualistic, and communism, which he said is too collective and too static. 